Now let us discuss your uh, status asthmaticus. First, let's define the disease. It is a severe and persistent asthma that does not respond to conventional therapy. Pag sinabi mong conventional therapy, ito yung mga nebulizer and um, inhalers na ginagamit mo uh, at home. Okay. And it is a severe life-threatening asthma episode kasi it is a worsened condition of asthma okay, that is refractory to treatment. Hindi na natitreat ng uh, ibang medi uh, medications na kasi kailangan na ng hospitalizations. And may result in pneumothorax, acute carpal monal, or your and your respiratory arrest or maybe uh, leading to death. What are the contributory factors? Just like your asthma, yung mga triggers, like for example, your uh, infection, your anxiety, and the one contributory factor is your nebulizer abuse. So, pag laging ginagamit ang um, ano, nebulizer, pag laging nag -ne si patient, Maring, uh, parang may immune na ang kanyang katawan. So, yun, dehydration, increased adrenergic blockage, and non-specific irritants. So, now let's understand the pathophysiology of the disease. First, we need to remember this uh, three, uh, this big tree, your uh, bronchospasm, edema, and inflammation, and mucus production. This tree will decrease the diameter of the bronchi. Of course, na pag may bronchospasm, nagnanarod ang airway. Pag may edema ang smooth muscles eh, or yung uh, lung tissues and inflammation, nagnanaro ang airway, lumiliit yung uh, butas na dadaluyan na hangin. Pag nagkaroon ng mucus production, magkakaroon ng mucus plug on the airway, lilit din yung daluyan ng hangin. Ang mangyayari dito, magdi-decrease ang diameter ng bronchi. Yan, magdi-decrease ang diameter ng bronchi. Ibig sabihin, liliit yung daluyan. Ah, maging narrowed ang airway. Resulting to your severe airflow obstruction. So, ayun, pag nag -narrow ang, uh, naging narrowed ang airway, hindi na makalabas ang air. So, mga uh, leading now to your dynamic hyperinflation. Ibig sabihin no, nito is air trapping. Na-trap yung hangin doon sa alveoli. Hindi siya makalabas. So, pag, nag, uh, pag napuno ng napuno ng hangin yung alveoli, hindi na to makakapag-contract at hindi, uh, hindi na niya kayang i-exhale yung hangin na nasa loob. Okay? It is your alveolar hypoventilation. So, yun, hindi na siya makakapag-contract para ilabas ang hangin. Okay? Leading now to your ventilation perfusion uh, mismatching. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng ventilation perfusion mismatching? Uh, it is also termed as your VQ defects. Okay? Your VQ defects. V, Q, tapos defects. Ang venti, ven, uh, ventilation perfusion mismatching uh, means one or more areas of the lung uh, receive oxygen but uh, not blood flow or vice versa. Ibig sabihin, pwede rin siyang mag uh, receive ng blood pero hindi siya makakapag-receive ng oxygen yanon, or baliktad this ventilation perfusion mismatching may lead to your hypoxemia diba kasi sabi niya one or more areas of the lung receive oxygen but not blood uh, blood flow or vice versa hindi rin makaka-receive ng uh, oxygen so Maglilid siya ngayon into your hypoxemia. And that is in the early stage. Okay? Uh, in the late stage naman, if it is worsen, magkakaroon na siya. Okay, ulit. Hypoxemia in early stage, okay, but does not have carbon dioxide retention. Yun yun ang early stage, ha? 
does not have carbon dioxide retention. But when the case worsens or in late stage, there will be a carbon dioxide retention. Leading now, okay, to your respiratory alkalosis in early stage. Kasi di ba, in your early stage, wala siyang carbon dioxide retention. So, due to hyperventilation, nagkakaroon siya ng respiratory alkalosis. But as the case worsens, nag-i-increase ng carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide will lead to your respiratory acidosis in the late stage. Okay, so sana naintindihan yung pathophysiology. Kung hindi na-gets, maaari natin iulitin sa Zoom. Okay? Uh, these are the clin clinical manifestations. Your labored breathing because uh, the patient cannot uh, exhale normally. Ha? Kailangan niyang um, i-force. Okay, prolonged exhalation. Bakit nagkakaroon ng prolonged exhalation? Kasi parang sa balon yan, na pag niluwagan mo ng ang airway ng balon, lalabas ang hangin na bigla. Pero pag yan, sobrang sikip, anong magiging effect? Magiging, di ba kung nari ganito ang ano niya, tapos ang exhalation, i -i -i, yan, mas matagal. Okay? Another is engorged neck veins. It is because of the strained okay, muscle of the neck bug. Uh, nagkakaroon ng labored breathing and syempre hindi yan mawawala ang wheezing kasi isa yan sa mga distinct characteristic of your asthma so wheezing uh, ang delikado dito pag yung wheezing will disappear no the disappearance of wheezing uh, it means an impending respira uh, respiratory failure okay Assessment and diagnostic findings, we have pulmonary function studies. Ito mga pulmonary function studies na to, uh, these are group of tests. So, marami to, your spirometry, mga ganun. And these are the most accurate means of assessing acute airway obstruction. Another is your ABG, arterial uh, blood gas measurements. So, with your uh, ABG, these are obtained if the patient cannot perform pulmonary function uh, tests. Okay? Kasi syempre, pag sa spirometry, kailangan uh, mag-blow, mag mga ganon. Or uh, yung iba, mag, kailangan mag-inhale, mga ganon. Pag hindi na kaya ni patient, mag abg na. Okay? Mag-order na si doctor ng ABG. Okay? Or if the patient does not respond to any treatment. So, di ba? Uh, most common na nakikita in the ABG of the client is uh, respiratory alkalosis in the early stage. But as sabi ko nga, as the case worsens, nagiging respiratory acidosis na siya. And respiratory acidosis in status asthmaticus is a danger sign of impending respiratory failure. Uh, kung mapapansin nyo yan, pulmonary function studies, ABGs, minsan hindi na ginagawa kasi uh, some of the doctors tinitingnan na lang nila with the signs and symptoms. Kasi kung titingnan mo yung clinical manifestations, these are the distinct manifestations of status asthmaticus. Pag nakita na nila yan, ah, status asthmaticus na yan. Palang gano'n. Okay. Next is uh, your medical management. Ito na, uh, of course, we need hospitalization pag uh, nagkaroon na ng status asthmaticus kasi hindi na nga siya, ano, uh, refractory na nga siya sa mga conventional therapy. So, kailangan ng short-acting beta adrenergic agonist. Yan. Uh, ano yung mga yun? Di ba? Yung beta Okay, these are your terol-terol, okay? Your albuterol, your perbuterol, your vitolterol. Uh, and your cost corticosteroids para ano, ma-decrease yung inflammation. Ano ito mga to? It ends with your son, di ba? Your night, your light, your fluticasone, prednisone, mga ganon. Okay? And in the... Uh, eh, 
the patient also needs supplemental oxygen since doon sa pathophysiology natin nakita natin kanina na si patient ay mayroong hypoxemia. Ibig sabihin, there is a low oxygen in the blood. Okay? And itong oxygen na to, uh, yung flow rate niya, it depends on the delivery method na ginagamit mo. Is it nasal cannula? Is it venturi mass? Mga ganun. Pero, uh, it is advisable ng gagamitin ni patient is a venturi mass. Okay? Uh, pwede rin naman ang nasal cannula kung wala tayong venturi mass. And the flow is based on pulse oximetry or ABG gas value. So, the partial uh, pressure of oxygen is maintained no, at 65 to 85 millimeters mercury. Okay? Uh, and, of course, one medical management is intravenous fluids for hydration. Diba, sabi natin sa asthma last time na the patient condition may lead to dehydration because of uh, perspiration, because of insensible losses. Uh, maybe uh, because of intolerable oral fluid intake. So, nursing management, we need to constantly monitor the patient for about 12 to 24 hours. Okay? And, uh, until the patient's condition is controlled. Kasi kung hindi natin yan ma-assess ng mabuti, uh, maaring baka magkaroon na ng disappearance of wheezing, si patient pala ay nagkakaroon na ng respiratory failure. Another is, is assess is skin turgor. Para sa to? Para sa dehydration. Yan. Fluid intake is essential. Uh, di ba? Meron siyang dehydration. So, fluid intake is essential for hydration and of course for lo uh, flu uh, to loosen secretions okay and facilitate expectoration pero ito uh, be very careful because there are some clients na nakaka-experience ng status asthmaticus na hindi nila kayang i-tolerate ang uminom baka it worsens sa condition pa Okay. Kung hindi na kaya ng, fluid, ng oral fluid intake, mag-administer na lang ng intravenous. And ang, ang prescribed nito is up to 3 to 4 liters a day. Okay? Unless it is contraindicated to the client. And that's all for status asthmaticus. I hope na intindihan nyo. Kung hindi, you can uh, leave a message to me para ma-address natin yung mga hindi naintindihan sa lecture na ito. Thank you!